Well, hey there, friends. It's Chris from the Rate the Record podcast. And yeah, I guess it would be that time of the week again for a new music review. This week, instead of four tracks, I have three new tracks. I think I'm going to move back to the three track model now. It's fine. I've been doing four for a while. Three just feels more comfortable. But regardless, I do have three new tracks that I've heard this week. I've heard them. I have opinions. I want you to hear them. I want to hear your opinions. That's how this whole thing works. So I think uh, we could probably jump into it. But not before scooting over this way and reminding you that if you like what you see and or here today, make sure that you like this video and you subscribe to the channel. Those are things that really do help. They're free and easy to do, leaving comments down below. The algorithm loves that stuff. I love this stuff. So if you could do all of that, that would be fantastic. Liking, subscribing, and commenting, again, with those opinions of yours that I want to hear. First up on the list today, we have the band Motley Crue, the glam metal slash heavy metal band out of Hollywood, California. And yes, they are still indeed releasing new music. Apparently there's gonna be some new tracks like sprinkled all over the entire year. But for now, we have a brand new song out by them called Dogs of War. I can say right off the top, that this was definitely heavier than I think I was anticipating, but then granted, I'm not really too familiar with Motley Crue beyond the 80s, like maybe some of their 90s stuff, but mostly the 80s. So this is definitely heavier than that at the very least. That could, you know, play in part to the fact that John 5 is now on guitar instead of McMars. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know, but here we are anyway. It's a mildly catchy track. There's nothing super wrong with it, but there's nothing super right about it either. And maybe it's catchy because of how many times Vince Neil says the word bastards in this track. It came off a little try hard edgy, especially with how many times it's said. Like I get the message behind the lyrics, but I feel like I could have been gone about it in a different way. And speaking of Vince Neil, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention all the live footage you can see online of Motley Crue playing concerts live recently within the last year. And I couldn't help but think to myself watching those videos and listening to this song about how many takes they must have done and how much processing must have had to have been done to get Vince Neil to sound this clean and articulated and legible at all. Like, his vocal performances live have not been good. They're not terrible here. They sound maybe a little too polished. Hence where I think all the processing probably came in, but at the same time, I mean, it works for what's going on here. At least you can hear him. Overall, it is what it is. I mean, you can't really expect gold at this point. I don't know, but it's definitely not the worst thing I've ever heard. I'll say that much. And I will say that it's leagues better than the Ace Fraley song I had to cover like a month ago or something like that. So it at least has that going for it. But with all that said, I mean, just take what you will from this information. Maybe listen to the song yourself, formulate your own opinion. Let me know because I'm just not really sold on this song. So coming up next on the list, we have the band Gel, a hardcore punk band out of New Jersey. And they've been on the scene since about 2018, so a little while at this point. They've released a couple of EPs, a full-length album, and they have another EP duo in August called Persona. So by all means, you could be looking forward to that. And in the meantime, they did drop a single very recently just to kind of push this kind of promotional cycle forward a little bit. And the song is called Mirage. This one really feels straight to the point with its energy and intensity, uh, and the screaming vocals feel really well fitted to the punchy drums and the low driving guitars, like everything just kind of feels in place in this song. With that said, there isn't really anything flashy about this track, but that doesn't mean that it can't be a simple but hard hitting one. And being just under three minutes, it's definitely a straightforward, decent head banging kind of track. And there's good production all around on this song, a very clean cut tone across pretty much everything on this track, while still sprinkling in like these noisier bits, especially with the guitar, so it kind of keeps that fun edge to it. Overall, I'll say that this one actually works though. I do like this song. There's nothing in this song that's a particularly standout, like holy shit kind of moment. But realistically, I think this one kind of like understood the assignment and came out as a strong, fun track. And I think that you should check it out. I, I really dig what I'm hearing so far. And finally on the list today, we have the band Cage the Elephant, the alt-rock band out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, and they're about to drop their sixth studio album in the middle of May called Neon Pill, and the latest track that they just released now for it is called Metaverse. This feels like it's straight out of the garage rock and post-punk revival of the early 2000s, you know, bands like The Strokes, The White Stripes, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm talking same style, same sound, 
production. I mean, this re-revival feels just like a little too on the nose and it doesn't really do anything to make it all that more exciting or welcome. So I don't know, it just, it, it felt a little uh, flat to me. That'll probably come up a little later too, saying the word flat. Honestly, the whole track was a little stale because I mean, first you have this lethargic vocal delivery through the, the entire song, verse, chorus, it doesn't really matter where you are, on top of a very unimaginative instrumental progression. So it just felt very boring in that sense. At the very least, the instrumental style does feel a little more upbeat and warm, but there's just not a whole lot about this though that really makes it all that memorable or enjoyable. So that's probably the biggest issue with this right now. Overall, I'll say it's it's pretty passable. I mean, sorry, not sorry, it is what it is. Kind of like what I said with Motley Crue. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've heard, but I mean, it just sounds like it's recycled too much from that early 2000s revival I had mentioned earlier. And I mean, near that same era, roughly what, like 13 years ago at this point, they released that song, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. And I mean, I wasn't that big on that song either, but at the same time, it was still far more interesting. It was more bouncy. There was a lot more texture in the song that really made it worth the listen at the very least. Not that I want to compare the old material to new material, but I mean, this one just felt flat. As I said, that word would come back. It just felt flat and it was very brief too, just over two minutes. And that's all I can really say about it. Not a whole lot going on here. Not a very good track. And that's all I have for the new music review today. So thank you very much for tuning in, hanging out with me and listening to these songs. And if you did indeed listen to these songs, then all I ask is that you go down to the comments below or off to the side or wherever the hell they might be right now. And let me know your thoughts on these songs. Did you like them? Did you hate them? Did you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? No matter what they are, by all means, I'm willing to hear your opinion. That's always cool, so please go ahead and do that. There's also another place that you can let me know your opinions on these songs, and it's over at ratetherecord.ca, the homepage, the main homepage, ratetherecord.ca. Maybe not specifically there, but the social media links are there, so you can check out all the social medias that I have for Rate the Record, and you can go over there and let me know your opinions. Not only that, but you can find all the streaming links for the podcast as well, which, you know, uh, I might have an announcement about that at some point in the very near future, so keep an eye and ear out for that. Streaming links, social media links, merchandise, and you can also support the show on ko-fi.com slash rate the record, but that is also at ratetherecord.ca. So all of those things I just mentioned, go over there, check it out, and you'll find plenty to do. So as I said, in the near future, there will be an announcement about the podcast. So stay tuned for that. Keep an eye and ear out for that, uh, because I will say that it is coming back. There is kind of an asterisk on that, but that's for then. This is now. Uh, and if you want to know what else is going on in the channel, well, I just released another ILTS video last week. The I Love This Song series is back once again, and I did it on Nine Inch Nails, The Line Begins to Blur, uh, a song that is near and dear to my heart for many reasons. And if you want to know those reasons, by all means, I suggest you go watch that video. Uh, I did a lot of work in production this time around. The production just keeps getting better and better on those particular videos. So please, I encourage you check it out. It's fantastic. I had a lot of fun doing it. Other than that, that's all I got to say right now. So one more time, thank you very much for watching this video, making it this far. And until I see you again, go listen to some awesome music and I'll see you again real soon. Take care, friends.